morning again. Good morning. When we last left, we were testifying regarding the gas station located at the corner of Mac and Buckingham in the city of Detroit. Yes. Okay. One more time, I'm with you when you went at 2.30 a.m. Armand Matthews, myself, Paris Cameron, and Timothy Blanchard and Alante Davis. And you were driving? Yes. Why did you drive to the store? Because I don't feel comfortable walking on the east side. How close is the store to the Debbie Shire House? It was literally walking distance, but I still didn't even want to walk even the slightest of a mile on that side of town. Okay, Blair, you uh, have seen the Project Greenlight video in this case, is that correct? Say that one more time. You have seen the Project Greenlight video in this case, is that correct? Yes. How many times now have you seen it? Once or twice. In its entirety? Is that a yes? Yes. Okay, you have to actually say yes. You can't nod your head, okay? Oh, my apologies. Thank you. And Blair, in that video, uh, did you see yourself and your friends? Yes. And is it, is it a fair and accurate representation of what happened on that night? Yes. This is the mark that has people one. Mr. Callahan. Move to the admission, Your Honor, of one. Any objections? Mm -hmm. Admitted. We're going to start with people's admitted number one at nine minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm going to ask the director of attention to the screen. Please tell me when you see yourself with your friends. Thank you. That is correct, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you. you. Blair, what do you see? Harris and Alante just walked in. Harris, Harris and Alante, I'm going to yes. ask you to pause it, Mr. Elder. And all of the jurors see from where they're seated. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Blair, you testified that Harris and Alante have just walked in. Yes. For the record, could you please indicate what Paris is wearing? Paris is the girl in all black and the Nike hat, and then Alante has on the camouflage shirt with the blue hat. Well, they both have on blue hat, but... He's wearing like a camouflage shirt and she's wearing all black. Excuse me, he's gonna have to speak up because my mics have to pick it up as well. Paris is wearing all black and then Alante is wearing a camouflage shirt. Do you see anyone? With shorts, basketball shorts. Do you see anyone else in this frame? I also see the vines. Mr. Robinson? Mm-hmm. Do you see Mr. Robinson? Yes, 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 yes. The person that you see in the video, do you see him in the courtroom today? Yes. For the record, could you please indicate where he's seated and what he's wearing? He's wearing formal attire. Can you please point for the record and indicate where he's wearing? He's right there. Thank you. Let the record reflect the witness is identified. The defendant well, he pointed in that direction, sir. Can you describe for the record what he's wearing? The color of his shirt. What does it look like? Gray. Blair, for the record, we have to have a record of mm -hmm. we're all wearing formal attire. All right, let the record reflect that witnesses identified the defendant as on what? All right, please indicate for the record on this screen what is Mr. Robinson wearing in the gas station? He's wearing basketball shorts, um, this camouflage jacket, and a hat. Is it light, co light colored clothing? Yes. And is the timestamp 2.40 a.m. on May 25th? Yes. Please continue to play it. What's happening now? Paris is thinking about getting his attention. I'm going to lay a foundation. That's where it is. Pause it, please. Lay a foundation. Where are you when this is happening? I haven't came in yet. Okay. So or you, maybe I have, like, wait, this is, yeah, I wasn't even in the store at that time. Okay. I but just, see, I either had walked in and out or I didn't come in yet. But you saw Paris in this, in this frame, correct? Yes. And did you see her turn her head towards someone? Yes, she was looking at him. Who's him? Devon. You watched that with your own eyes? Like, did I actually see the video or did I see that the video, in person? The video. Yes. All right, and you are at the gas station at this point, just not in this frame. Yes. All right, let's continue to play.
That's me right there in the pants. Alright, let's pause it again. And that's Timothy. Okay. For the record, where are you? Um, I'm I'm about to open the um the door to the uh picture the, the first door. person who came in? Yes. Uh, do you see Timothy in this frame? Yes, he's the third person in the short set. What is Timothy wearing? He's um, wearing like the pinkish gray, he's wearing like a pinkish grayish um, short set. And Paris? Paris is wearing um, all black, so she's all the way in the back behind me. And Alante? Alante is like, um, well not like Alante, but he's like, like two feet behind me. Let's continue to play it. Mm -hmm. Robinson in the frame again? Yes. He's Where just is walked he? back in the story. He's right there. <clears throat> walking back in. Continue to play it, please. And as you can see in the reflection of the mirror, we all walked off the store. Okay, okay. we're going to question the witness, so please I'm going to pause it. We do need, need to make a record regarding what's happening. Blair, can you please tell me you indicated that you left the store? Yes. With everyone? Yes. How are you able to see that? In the reflection of that mirror right there, in the video, to the far left. Are you observing what's happening between Paris and Mr. Robinson? Yes, I was also observing that. What's happening? There was nothing happening. Like, basically, they were just shooting shots, you know. What do you mean by shooting shots? Like, basically talking about, like, inviting them back to the party at that time. There's an objection on the force that we still respond at this point, Mr. Robinson. What's your objection? Hearsay. 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 Please tell me what you mean by they're shooting shots at each other. No, like, they're not shooting shots, but they were talking about, like, planning on how they were going to invite him back to the party, or if they were going to invite him back to the party. That's what they were talking about in the video. Okay. All right, I'm going to ask that you speak into the microphone so that Mr. Callahan can hear you, please. They were talking... So can hear as well. Okay. They were talking about, basically, how they were going to get the boy to come back to the house. The boy being... Devon. Is Paris flirting with Devon? Not at that moment, but yeah, she's... That's speculation. That's speculating. He's observing this as it's happening. He's answering the question. Oh, excuse me. Oh, So basically... Wait, could you ask the question one more time, please? What's happening at this point between the defendant and Harry? They're just talking about how they're going to get the get Devon to come back to the house. And does anything else happen between Paris and the defendant? At that moment, no. At that exact moment, no. Okay. Let's continue to play the, the video. All right, the time stamp being 2.40 a.m. at this time. Do you know where you parked at the gas station that night? I, okay, so Mr. Thiel, I have a question. This is kind of seeming awkward. What I need you to do when we're going to respond to a question is turn back around and face the mic, okay, so that we can hear you. 
No, I understand what you were saying. I was just trying to remember okay. what happened. Right. part. Um, is it okay if you play the video? Because I really can't sure. remember. Do you want to talk about part. it as you see it? Yes. Yes. Is that okay with the court? Counsel, do you have any objections? Okay. I mean, if the video will speak for itself, I don't really think you need a witness on the stand to do a commentary and a blow by blow of the video that's being played. Would you need to identify the vehicles and the persons and in the shop? That's fine. So you can ask him about those issues, but I don't need a blow by blow by of the video. I can review the video. You Thank you. The video has been published. Thank you. Okay. We're going to play the video. Timestamp 2.40 a.m. 2.40 or 2.48? This is 2.40. This is what's happening. What we just watched was what was happening inside and now we're watching what's happening outside. What do you see? I see Devon walking towards the gas station. Okay, now I remember. All right, what do you see? I have, well, we're all walking out of the gas station, but I have parked to the far left. You can't even see my car. We can't see your car, really? No. Please continue playing. Okay, we're going to play now? Devon, walking out the gas station. Yeah. Ma'am. What's happening? This is where Paris shoots her shots. What do you mean by shoots your shots? The video speaks for itself. Your Honor, there is no audio on the video, and again, this is a present sense impression. The witness is hearing what is happening as it's happening. There's nothing to hear here. Okay, I'm going to overrule the objection. So this witness is testifying to what he recalls occurred at the time that this video was taken. That's correct. The court is going to allow it. What's happening here? Paris is like, what's that? You know, basically getting his attention. That's her shooting her shots. Thank you. Come on. And that's now? me trying to tell. That's me trying to tell Paris to get back in the car. What is she doing? Trying to get Devon's attention while I'm telling her to get back in the car. So at that moment where she was walking back, she was basically giving him the address and the location to where we were. She never told him to. Foundation, Judge. Please lay a foundation. Are you representing the Paris Police Department? Yes. You're listening to what's happening. Yes. Is it refreshing your recollection as to what I'm happened? I'm literally the reliving time? everything. Okay. Yeah. What is happening? So at that time, she's giving him the location and the address as to where we are. And I'm telling her, like, why is you giving this boy the, you know, random whatever. 
she never forced him to come there. He made the decision. I'm going to stop you. But she's telling you him where you guys are. Yeah. Okay. She never was like, I want you to come. She just was like, you should come. It was like a suggestion more so. Okay. Does she eventually get back in the car? Yes. Let's play the video. Pause it here. What's happening now? She's still shouting out at him. Cause I believe he was standing right there. Like not in the not in camera view, but like he was like in a dark alley on the side. Paris is leaning out your back window. Yelling out, you know, don't forget to come through. Now you're pulling out on don't play it. Just gotta pause it. You're pulling out onto what street? Matt. Where are you going now? Um, we're going back to Devonshire. Did you lose something at this point in time? Yes. Um, the reason why I was sitting there is because I had realized I had lost my wallet. That's why I sat there for that moment, because I was looking around scrambling for my wallet. When you leave the gas station, do you immediately go back to Devonshire? Um, I'm panicking. So I didn't immediately go back. I passed the house a good two times, but then eventually I got back there. So you drove around for a minute because of your wallet and yes. then you went back to Devonshire? Yes, I went back to Devonshire, yes. I'm going to ask that you turn this off. All right, at some point, when you get back to Devonshire, do you see the defendant again? <clears throat> yes, I see him walking towards the house. So is this coming from Mac or the opposite direction of Mac? The opposite direction of Mac. Do you know what the, street, um, do you know what the streets are that run perpendicular to Devonshire? I would have to see the map. Yeah, I'm not very good okay. with directions. Do you find Mac Avenue on number two? Yes. And the street? So Devonshire is right here, right? He was coming from this one. So that's Burnswick Street. He was. Brunswick? He's coming from Brunswick Street. All right, so the defendant is approaching Devonshire from Brunswick. What's happening? Um, we're pulling back. As we're pulling back in, in front of the house, he's walking towards the house. What is Paris doing? Paris is getting out the car, you know, saying, oh, so you actually did come through, you know, and then she takes him into the house. What do you do? I sit in the car because I'm, you know, I'm irritated that I lost my wallet. So I'm thinking, like, should I, you know, I'm debating if I should replace it or should I go, try to go find it. All right, so what else, what else happens? Um, after that, um, Alante gets out the car and Timothy gets out the car, and it's just me and, um, not me and Lance, but um, Lance comes back out the house, and then he gets in the car, because um, I guess he was getting liquor or something. All right, don't, I don't want you to guess. I just want you to tell me what happened, okay? Okay. All right, he, so you he was getting liquor, and he um, got back in the car, and I told him what, what, what happened or whatever, and we Wait, just started. Stop. You said Lance comes out and gets into your car, mm -hmm. and you're telling him about something that has happened. Yeah, um, at the gas station, um, by me losing my wallet because I was I was like going off. I was mad. Do you mention anything about the defendant coming back to the house? Oh yeah, that's also what I had talked about too. I forgot. Were Sorry. you upset about that? No, I wasn't up too upset about that because I really. Like at that time, like I was the type of person that's like, that ain't got nothing to do with me. If y'all want to bring a random boy from a gas station, that's on y'all. But I did tell him, like, you know, I didn't like the fact that they did that because it's a random boy from a gas station, you know. Why does this concern you? It concerned me because it's a random guy from a gas station. All right. So that's you why. You stay in the car with Lance for a little while. What happens next? Um, I end up rolling me a blunt to calm myself down. And then um, after that, shortly after, Lance had tried to come on to me like he had touched me inappropriately. So that's what made me get out the car and go in the house eventually. What happens when you go in the house? I go in the house, I see Tay, Timothy, and Paris running around laughing. I already knew they was up to no good. So I asked them what happened and they said, girl, this, this boy is with it, you know. And I'm like, which I mean that he with it. So we all go upstairs and... Who's we all? Me, Paris, Timothy, and Tay. Where's the defendant? He's upstairs in the room. 
Is he by himself this time? or is he, he was by himself up there. Okay. So as we all go up there, they're trying to, they saying that basically he allowed judge them. What they're saying, judge. Again, it's a present sense impression. Is it happening in time as he's experiencing? I, I, everything she's talking about is happening as she's, well, he, he or she is saying it. It's an out of court statement being offered to prove the is truth. At this point, yes, it's a present sense impression. It's happening, it's an exciting event. That so the exception is that it's a present sense impression. That's correct. So as I'm walking up, you know, they say, so do you want to suck? Can, can I, do I have to always say their names? You do, because we are making a record. I know that it's okay. Sad. Okay. So Paris asked me, do you want to try to, you know, suck his penis? Now, mind you, I'm drunk at the time, so I ain't even going to lie. I was going to do it. I was. I was going to do it. But um, when we had gotten in the room and they, you know, put left me in a room by myself with this boy, it was just something about him. Like, it was something off about this boy. Did the defendant say anything to you? Yes, he was like, why you not sucking? And I said, because me and you the same type of nigga. What does if that you, mean? If you not sucking, I ain't about to suck. So I walked out. Right. Does anybody else come into the room? Yes, after that, Paris had one in there behind me. They had took him into the next room, because you know, oh yeah, I didn't explain the surroundings. It was two rooms. The bedroom, which everything went down. The bedroom, which everything I went down, and then it was the room where they had left me in by myself with the boy. And then there was the um, room across from it where the dog was. That door was locked. So they took him into the master Maybe. bedroom. Paris, Tay, and Timothy took him into the master bedroom. Are you watching what's happening? Um, yes. No, 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 no. Not at that time. I went back downstairs. Do you come back up at some point? Yes. Right, tell me about that. So when I, when I come back up, I see all of them giving him head. What else oh, happens? Paris, Timothy, and take and Armand give them it. Excuse what else happens? Me. Excuse me. Slow down, please. Okay. All right. You're watching the defendant receive oral sex. Is that correct? Yes. And what happens next? Um, shortly after, Lance comes in. Okay. And when Lance comes in, what happens? He turns on the light, he sees what's happening, he looked down, turn off the light, and gets to suck in two. What about the other people who are in the room? Do they leave or do they stay? They stay, and everybody stayed participating. Not everybody that was in the room, but the people that were already doing it stayed doing it. How, how is the defendant appearing at this time? This lamp, this sitting. Indicating for the record, sitting, seated back? Just, yeah, he was just chilling. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does he see I mean, anything? Yes. These individuals that are no, the right? whole time he's not saying anything. He's just sitting there, chilling the whole entire time. Not an emotion in his face. All right, did you have any, um, did you and Paris and anyone else up there talk about the defendant? While we're up there? Well, let me ask you something. Uh, what is a trade? A trade is a person that is um, DL but appears a heterosexual male. But they actually, you know, they basically perceive people into thinking that they're straight, but they're really not. Did, what is DL? DL is a person that is questioning. So, not like, they're not very sure about their sexuality, but they basically are ashamed of their sexuality. Does it, does it stand for down low? Yes. Right. And did you refer to the defendant as a trade? Yes. All right. Why? Because he appeared as a heterosexual man, but he's letting gay boys suck his penis. Did you guys make comments to the defendant regarding him being gay? No. Did you and Paris talk amongst yourselves in front of him saying he's gay, he's with it? No. We were downstairs okay. talking about that. Did you ever talk about it upstairs? Did you ever giggle about him upstairs? Mm -mm. Right. No, 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 no. All right. What else happens when Lance comes in? So after that, after Lance comes in, it, it starts smelling like, you know, whatever. So I walked out the room. After that, I see Brendan walking up the steps. Now, mind you, let's go back to our mind and Brendan. They were a thing. They weren't dating, but they were a thing. So um, after Brendan had walked in, you know, he saw everything that was going on. I'm not saying that he caught our mind. I don't know what happened around that time, because I was not around that time, but I don't know if he caught him or not, because I All didn't right, see I'm everything. Stop you. So Brendan and Armand have I been going on right him. now. Sorry? I could just hear everything that was happening. I didn't see everything that happened, because okay. so I was downstairs. But my question is, Brennan and Armand are dating at this time? A thing, but A yes. Thing. 
And is Brendan happy at this time? No, he wasn't too happy with what he saw. Okay. Did you observe Brendan and Armand having an argument? Yes. Where was that? Um, that was upstairs, um, leading to the back balcony, I think that was. Were you involved in this at all? Um, later, like about 20 minutes later, after the argument kind of settled down, yes. The initial part of the argument with Brendan and Ramon, is it physical or is it verbal? It's only verbal. No physicalities. Does the defendant leave at some point? Yes. Tell me about that. Okay, so shortly after everything had boiled down, um, I went back up to the, while everything happened and Lance and him is still in the room doing what they're doing, basically. Lance and who? Lance and Devon. They're still doing whatever they was doing. So when I went back up there, um, they were just finishing. He asked, he finally said something. Devon finally spoke. He said, I came three times. Um, after that, I turned on the light. Uh, they were getting dressed. He walked out the house. They being? Devon. And who's the other And person? Lance was getting dressed. I stayed up there with Lance. Devon walked straight out after he was done dressing. Um, did, did you see the defendant interacting with Paris before he left? I mean, I didn't go downstairs just yet. I was still upstairs with Lance. Okay. Because Lance looked a little down about something. I don't know what was. I, I don't know if he felt the shame. I don't know. But um, he said he didn't want the door left open. You know, so that's why I was checking up on. I'm like, you good? You know, you good? You, he said you good. So after that, I went downstairs and then I saw. Paris and Devon basically exchange your numbers. What else do you see? Um, I see Armand and Brendan basically just talking and arguing, and then Paris, Alante, and Miami just sitting in the background laughing. What is the interaction between Paris and the defendant before he leaves? They just exchange numbers. How does the defendant... And then after that hug, and Devon walks the way that he came. How does the defendant look while Paris is talking to him? He has just a very bland look. He said, oh yeah, I'll see you again. That's what he said when he left. Anything about the way he looked concerned you? Yeah, it, it was just like, it was just a look like, I don't know. I didn't know what to think of. It, it was just a cold look. What happened next? Um, after that, Lance and Brendan leaves because Brendan was officially pissed at what had happened because I basically had approached Brendan. All right, I'm gonna stop you. All right, do you get into it a little bit with Brandon? Yes. Right, why? Because Harris and Timothy told me that she said that she had wanted to fight me. And she? Brendan. All right, you referred to Brendan as a she, why? Oh, because she acted like a girl to me. Okay. Brendan is, identifies as male or female? Male, so I'll just say male. Okay, this is because Brendan's annoying you? Yeah. That's right. Okay, all right. All right, so you have an argument with Brendan also. Mm -hmm. Is this verbal yes. or physical? Um, it's just verbal. You know, I walked up to him and I, t I asked him, did he want to fight? And mm -hmm. he just, um, he started just running off at the mouth. And I was just, you know, it wasn't, it was just verbal. Does Brendan leave? Brendan eventually leaves. Do you know who he leaves with? He lives with Lance. Do you know where they go? No, I don't. He claimed that he was going home mm -hmm. or to change. I don't know. You had lost your wallet earlier in the night? Yes. Around this time, um, did something happen regarding that wallet? Yes, so, um, you know, Timothy, Tay, and Paris eventually brings back up my wallet, like, did you find your wallet or whatever? And I was like, no, I didn't find it yet. Um, so they like, well, maybe you left it at the gas station. Uh, we gonna go back up there and find it. Right. And so I'm they like, took well, your car to go? Yeah, they had, for some reason, took the car and went back up there. All right, and you stayed home? Yeah, I had stayed back with Armand. All right, so it's just you and Armand at Devonshire? Yes. All right. Do Paris, Timothy, and Alante come back to Devonshire? Yes. Do they have your wallet? Yes. Okay. What are you doing now? Um, well, I'm relieved because, like, even though my money was stolen, my license and Social Security was all in there. But um, after that, shortly after, we all just start talking, and that's it. While you're talking, does something happen? He, Devon walks in. Well, we think that if we were 20 minutes into the conversation, we will. Kian talking about the orgy, um, you know, and how it happened, and basically like laughing about it, because you know it was a, it was a funny situation at the time. We, who's who's at the house at this point? Me, Paris, Alante, Timothy, and Armand. All right. And while you're sitting around laughing about the situation, what happens? We hear footsteps. We think it's Lance. We hear like, mind you, it's like 
kind of close to July, so we, we hear like little firecracker noises. It wasn't a big gun, but it was like pow, pow, pow. So we thinking it's Lance playing a joke. But then we see a guy with a ski mask come in. Objection to weed. Okay, what do you see? I see him coming in with a ski mask and... Does this person have a weapon? Yes, he was shooting. What did you do? Um, I was in a two second shot. That's how I got a good glance, at least at his, you know, at his eyes. That's how I remembered. And then after that, I had ran into the bathroom. Where's the bathroom in relation to the table where you were seated? Um, right behind the table. So it's like, you showed me a picture of the table. So it's like that black, where that black table is, it's on the left side. What happens at this point? All I hear is parrot scream and gunshot. I hear blood coming through the walls and, yeah. What do you do? I just sat there and waited for him to walk out the house. I was scared. Did you hear the shooter leave? Yes, I heard the door close and everything. I walked back out there. I see Paris. And then I um, instantly call 911. I'm running down to, well, I'm calling 911. I'm running down to um, the basement. And I see Timothy on the floor in the basement. Is Armand in the basement also? Armand was trying to stop the bleeding from Armand. So it, as I saw him helping Timothy, I went back upstairs and he helped Sam Paris. What do you do? As I'm on the phone, they finally answer. I'm just following the instructions that the, the lady on the phone was giving me. Is Paris still breathing at this time? Yes. What are you doing for her? Um, I picked her up and moved her away from Tay because as I checked Tay posts, um, there wasn't no posts, so he was already dead on the scene. So I um, was trying to help Paris. Were you able to? No. Because I didn't, I couldn't tell where she was bleeding from. She was bleeding, it was so much blood, I didn't know where, you know, where to stop the bleeding from coming from. You called 911? I was on the phone with 911 at that time. You listened to your 911 call before, is that correct? Yes. Mark, do you agree? Okay. Move for the Okay, that's fine. 
They just tell me to sit in the car. Do they come in with their guns drawn? Yes. What else? Well, I was outside at that time. Did you go out to get the police? Yes. Why? Because I saw lights coming up to the porch. Did you go out to get help? Yes. When they come in, there was some, were you having discussions with Armand during this call? During the call, yes. I was trying to figure out how to, if he knew any type of way to stop the bullying, because I, I don't know anything about that type of situation. I've never been in a situation like that before. And that's when you discovered that Miami was shot? Yes. Who is Miami? Miami is Timothy Blanchett. Approach with Exhibit number four. You propose number four. What am I showing you? <coughs> the Devonshire Hall. Yes. Move for the admission. Showing number five. What is that? The vehicle I was driving that night. Is that in front of the Devonshire house? No, that's um, in front of the house by it. In front of the house by it. Next Where? To it. It's in front of the house that was next to it. Okay. Do you see Lance's house in that photo? Yes. All right. Move for the admission number five. Any objection? Okay. Publish. 
Blair, for the record, could you please indicate what you see in this photo? My Hyundai is a 2010 Sonata and the Devonshire house. Showing you proposed six. What is that? The front room, like the front room, like just before you get to the... Okay, is this, is this the room where the front door opens into in the yes. Devonshire house? Yes. Move for the admission of six. Thank you. Good. May I publish? You may. Okay. That is the front room entrance. The front door opens up into this room? Yes. Was this house under construction? Yes. Showing you proposed seven. This is the crime scene. What room? The mm -hmm. diamond room. Is this the, does this room attach to the exhibit that the jurors are looking at right now on the screen? Yes. Move for the admission number seven. Any objection? No objection. Okay. Can I publish? May. Blair, tell me what's in number seven. The table. Do you want me to let you know where everybody was sitting? To if the best of your ability, yes. Please. To the best of my ability. Pam Paris, we're sitting by where the speak, where that black speaker is, where it says 12 and 5, where the 12 and 5 cone is. And Blair, if you don't um, mind, just will you turn back and speak into the microphone just so we can hear? Timothy was sitting by 4, and Armand was sitting by where the red and the blue line things are. And then Paris was also sitting by me. No, all, I was sitting in the middle, actually. Were all of you sitting in, this, in the same general area, in the same room? Yes. Together? Yes. When the shooting started? Yes. So Where like the, the, the photo that you showed me before, he walked in through that door. Okay. To the front room? Yes. Thank you. Right. Where is the bathroom located? The bathroom is located. And is that where you went when the shooting started? Yes. Where do Paris and Alante end up? Um, Paris and Alante end up running into the living room. Not the living room, but the, um, the kitchen. Where is that in relation to where the bathroom is? To the left. So it's not like, it's just before you get to the bathroom. Can you point to that? That's the kitchen area. And where is... Um, the basement in relation to this photo, the door to the basement? Um, it's within the um, kitchen area. So there's a doorway that leads to the basement. Can you point to the kitchen area? Um, you can't see it, but it's over here to the left. All right. So there's actually like a, a walkway, like a door walkway. Not like a door, but like a, like a walkway. Okay. All right. Showing you proposed eight, Blair. What is that? That's the same place. Is that a closer up version of the yes. same place? All right, move for the admission number eight. Okay. Admitted. Can I publish? May. Looking at number eight. Again, using the pointer, where is the entrance to the bathroom?
Royal. I believe the objection is going to be to exhibit number 11, which shows the body of Alante Davis slumped against the outside of the bathroom wall. And Attorney Callahan, what's your objection? Judge, that is more prejudicial and probative uh, on the floor of three. I don't believe that it's admissible. Can I prosecute your response? Yes, Your Honor, the photo is probative and relevant. It shows where the casings land beside Alante Davis, lending credence to the theory that this was premeditated and intentional because of where the casings are towards the body shows that there was a shooting at or near the body that these victims were pursued further into the house. It also shows the blood that is soaking through the drywall. You just heard testimony from a witness that he actually observed the blood coming through the drywall while he was hearing screaming, which also is relevant to show that this witness is not a suspect, not a defendant, and that he was honest about his location in the home during the shooting. The court is going to overrule the objection. The court is going to allow the pictures to be admitted. The court does not believe that the pictures are more prejudicial than probative at this time. Thank you, Your Honor. We will allow the witness to take a stand and to bring the jury back out. Okay. Please. Showing your proposed number nine. What is that? One of the two tables that were um, sitting on the crime scene. Okay, I ask that you speak into the microphone. I can't hear you. One of the two tables that were sitting on the crime scene. Move for the admission of, of number nine, Your Honor. tables that were, like, it's basically the table right in front of the bathroom entrance. So the, ba the, the bathroom tables. is where you went to? Yes. Showing you proposed 10. <coughs> the crime scene of... Did you talk to them again when you were calling? Yes. Do you remember when that was? They said all the time. Do you remember when that was, the second time that you talked to them? Also, if, we, if we're done with this picture, can I come down? Absolutely. Thank you. Now, you said that you talked to them the second time and you were calmer? Yes. Okay. First time? I just time? don't remember the time, but I, I do remember um, the day that it happened, having an interrogation with my brother. Okay. The day that it happened? Yes. All right. And then you spoke with them a few days later? 
with um, updating me about, I guess, my own belonging and stuff. And did you give them more information at that time? Yes, Tell I was able it. to give them more in-depth information. And um, what did you provide them with? Um, I provided them with more intel. Did you tell them specifically what the shooter looked like? Oh, yes. I told them what he was wearing. Um, I can't remember now, of course. But all I remember is that he was wearing a ski mask. And his eyes were like brown. And did you describe the complexion? Light skin. And Same did you? complexion as the one, as the divine character that had came in the house that night, that same night. You told the police that, that the shooter had the same complexion as the person that you met in the gas station that night? Yes. Did you tell them anything else? No. Are you able to identify the person who was the shooter that night? Yes. Why? Only by skin complexion and eyes. And who did that look like to you? It looked like the same boy that came to Bosch. The person sitting in the courtroom today, the defendant, Mr. Robinson? Yes. Were there any guns in the house that belonged to you or anyone else? Not, not of my knowledge, no. Did you go to Paris's funeral? Yes. And what about Alante and Tim? Yes. One moment. Nothing further this time. That's the nomination. Five different right. people, correct? So mostly I was in court. Objection. I'm going to ask Mr. Cohen. I'm not cut off. So I was mostly. Just one moment. There's an objection on the floor, so you can't speak, okay? I don't believe you answered the question. <laughs> well, okay, so you got what you want. Yeah. Okay. All right then. But, Mr. Keys. It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to turn to Callanan. Please Thank don't you. cut the witness off. So, but wait, can you finish the answer? About how many people went out, but... He did answer it. He was not done. He was cut off. Well, the rest of it wasn't responsive. But Attorney Callahan, Callahan asked how many people were in and out of the house, and he said between 20 and 25 people. Now, Madam Prosecutor, if you want to, on your redirect, clarify further his answer to that question, you are free to do so. Thank Attorney you. Callahan? Thank you. And, and during this period of time, um, you didn't personally sit and visit with every person that came in and out of this location, did you? No. And uh, you would be unaware of anyone that left angrily that night, correct? You wouldn't know. No. Got an idea what time it is? After two o'clock, two thirty. Yes. After two forty, actually, it was about three o'clock when we had got back to the house. Okay, and then you and Lance sit in the car from three until three thirty, about correct? No. Or yes, just objecting, sir. It's obvious, he Mr. Keys. Now we're not yeah. going to do this. Do I need to have you take leave the stand for a moment? So you can get yourself together. Okay, you know, we're going to have this witness. Okay. Come this way. Come this way. Off the stand for a moment. Thank you. And that is going to be stricken from the record. I will instruct the jury not to consider that once they get to deliberation. Just lock him the fuck up. Thank you, Josh. 
Are we going to break this down? Sorry, Kellyanne. Yeah, I, uh, that would be appreciated. Okay. I think the motions are running high. I want time to address this. We will break for lunch. I do not want to break it as a testimony of a witness. And it's in the I'm going to be a while. I understand that. So we'll go ahead and break at this time. We'll be back in an hour. And then you can resume the cross examination. I, I did think that this was going to take a while. So, um, jurors, please recall the instructions that I gave you yesterday about not discussing the case amongst yourselves or with anyone else. Understand that you may not speak to anyone involved in this case, the attorneys, the witnesses, the defendant, their family members. Uh, please leave all of your notes on your chair. Do not take any of your notes into the jury room with you. And I'm going to ask that you all go into the jury room at this time, even if you don't have to gather anything. At this point, you are a jury, and I need you all to move together. So everyone on the jury needs to go into the jury room at this time, and we'll let you know when you can step out to go to lunch. All rise for the jury. <laughs> Councilors? Charlie Calamere. 